Welcome to part 2 of the partial screen shake shader tutorial in Unity by Peerplay. In the previous part we've been offsetting the screen position by random values. In this part we will create a controller to trigger and fade out the effect. If you find the contents of this tutorial helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you enable me to create these for my peers and you get access to the tutorial source files and exclusive content. Special thanks to Wayne Glows. Unless you want to create the first game with a constant screen shake, we need to create a script to trigger the effect and fade out the strength so it disappears again. But create a C Sharp script to control the shader. Let's do that right now. So, on the post processing of the volume, let's add a component and we're going to type screen shake controller. Let's open up that script. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to access the screen shake settings. And that is a part of the volume component. So to get access to that, we need to be using the system.rendering and system.rendering.universal. So let's type using unity engine.rendering and we're gonna be using unity engine.rendering.universal. Now let's declare that this script needs the volume of components, so this script will only be placed on somewhere where there is actually a volume component. So let's say require component type of volume. Now in the start function, we want to connect the screen shake settings with the screen shake settings on the volume. But we also need to check if this settings is actually available on the volume. So to do that, we're first going to create a private volume. And we'll call this underscore volume. And we'll do a get component of the volume. Now I just upgraded to Visual Studio 2022 and this is auto completing stuff. So I just have to press tap if it's actually what I want. Very handy. Now let's write screen shake settings. And we'll call this one temp. And now we'll write an if statement. And we'll say if volume dot its profile dot try get and we're trying to get the screen shake settings now again you see that it's out of completing stuff from the IntelliCode really this is the first time I'm using this so I can just press tap and then it's there so the try get works in this way that it's trying to find the screen shake settings on the volume. And if it does find it, then it will do an out. So it will place it into something else. And that's why we created the temporary one. So it will place it into this one. Also, this functions as a Boolean. So this will return true. And if this is true, then we can set the screen shake settings to the temp. So we'll say screen shake settings is the temp. Now, while the game is running, the shake strength X and the shake strength Y will be set at zero. And the goal of our controller is to adjust these settings to something higher than one. And once they're higher than one, then we're going to let that fall back again. So let's go underneath the update and let's create a function for that. So we're going to say public void and we'll call this shake screen. And we want to be able to set the X and Y values individually. So we'll create a float for the input. And we'll call this the shake strength x and the shake strength y. Thank you, IntelliCode. Now let's apply these values to the screen shake settings. So we'll say screen shake settings dot its shake strength x dot its value is the shake strength x. Now we'll say screen shake settings dot shake strength y dot its value is the shake strength y. Now let's also add another function and we'll call this public void set the shake settings and in this function we'll input all the other parameters that we have in the screen shake settings so far we only have one so we'll say float and we'll get the offset percentage so we'll say screen shake settings dot its offset percentage dot its value is the offset percentage now let's scroll to the top and we're going to add two public floats the first one is going to be a public float and we'll call this the fallback percentage and the other float we'll add is the fallback dead zone 
Now the fallback percentage is the percentage by which the strength will be divided. So if the fallback percentage is like 10% and the number is one, then it will every frame take 10% of its current number. So if it's one, it takes 10% of it, it becomes 0 0.9. Then it takes 10% again, it becomes 0 0.81. Then it takes 10% again, then it becomes something like 0 0.72 and so on and so on. Now, once the number gets really low, like 0 0.1, and you don't see any influence anymore, you might just want to set the number to zero. So the fallback dead zone will be like the threshold for the smallest number in which it doesn't really matter to keep dividing it. And then it will just be set to zero. And for easy control, we're going to add range values to these so we can get sliders between a certain number that makes sense. So we'll type range. And we'll set the range between 0 0.1 to 50. And for the fallback dead zone, we'll set a range between 0 0.01 and 0 0.1. Now let's create the functionality to actually make this fallback happen. So let's scroll down. And we're going to create a private void which will be the function that we'll call in the update here. And let's call this the shake strength fallback. Now let's first check if we actually have a screen shake settings component. So we'll say if underscore screen shake settings is not equal to null. So if the try get was successful, so there was a screen shake settings added to the volume, then we can do the function. Otherwise it doesn't really make sense and the function will get an error. Now we're going to check if the value of the shake strength X or Y is higher than the dead zone. So we'll say if screen shake settings dot shake strength X dot its value, if it's higher than fallback dead zone, then we're going to say that screen shake settings dot shake strength X dot value, the fallback percentage. But the fallback percentage is not yet a percentage. We need to do some logic to transform this percentage into a value that we can use, which will actually divide the shake strength by multiplying. So let's say this number is 10, then we want to multiply this number by 0 0.9. So how do we get that number? Well, we have 100% and we'll subtract the fallback percentage from that. So we get 90. And 90 divided by 100 is 0 0.9. But the multiplication is faster than division. So we're going to multiply this by 0 0.01. Now for the else statement. If the value is not higher than the fallback dead zone, we just want to set the value to 0. So we'll say screen shake settings dot shake strength x. But its value will become 0f. Now we've done it for the X value, so we'll do exactly the same for the Y value as well. So copy, paste everything, and we'll change everything to Y. Now in the update, we'll call this function. So we'll say shake strength fallback, run that. Now that's it for the functionality. The only thing that remains is that we still need to implement the shake screen function somewhere so we can test it. So in the update, we're going to test it by assigning it to some buttons. So we'll say if input dot get key down, we'll get key code dot alpha one. So if we press this button, we'll call the shake screen function. And now we can say how much we want to shake the screen. So we'll set this to 1.0 and 1.0. Now let's change one parameter in the shake screen. I set this to an is statement, but let's change this to a plus is and this one to plus is. The change of this means that the number will be added to this value. So if there's a shake trigger happening after another shake trigger, like two explosions happening almost at the same time, then these will be added together. So it will increase the intensity of the entire shake. Now let's add two more buttons. So I'm going to copy this, paste it twice. 
and we'll change this to alpha 2 and alpha 3. And let's say that if we hit alpha 2, we only want to shake it horizontally. And with alpha 3, we only want to shake it vertically. That's it for the script. Let's save the script and go back to Unity. Let's set the fallback percentage to 10 and the dead zone somewhere here. Now let's test our screen shakes. Let's set the offset percentage a little bit higher so we see something. Now I'll press 1. And there we have a screen shake. And it falls back. When I press 2, it will only go horizontally and with 3 vertically. Now I find the offset percentage a little bit too much. So let me set it to 4. Maybe want to have it a little bit quicker fallback. Better. Let's try a really slow fallback and an offset percentage of high. Maybe set it to low. I suggest to play around with the settings and find out what works best for your taste. That's it for this part. In the next part, we will offset the screen position based on noise instead of random. Thank you for following so far and thanks to all my patrons. To stay updated with new content, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Happy coding!